most people are interested in how does I make a life worth living and which I make worth having. In my lifetime, I've loved basically only a few girls. I had a girl in high school and, of course, a gal in college. But mainly the gal in college was much more serious. Then I moved on overseas and I found a relationship that I had for more than 10 years, I'll say lawfully, but it was a lot longer and I'm not going to tell you how long because that's private information. But it was long enough to be half of almost my lifetime. The truth is that in life we have requirements that make us unable to say certain things to certain people at certain times. We are told that they're going to get divorced by the Lord who whispers in our ears and says she's going to be divorced. I was literally standing in my kitchen when that message came to me. She was also either on the phone or in my room, I can't remember which. But the reality was I was sort of surprised and shocked that the Lord told me that. But lo and behold, that is precisely what happened. Now when I talk like this, I'm trying to figure out how to use this new phone that records things only for audio files, but this time I thought I'd show my little bald head and furry face just to prove who I am. The reality is that I'm having to change my professional name because of the lies that have been put on my life by several people who had no lawful right to say one word about me without talking to me first. You see, a gal long ago thought she was a player. She rushed into me, she moved into my home, she came into my private office, she did all sorts of things in my house. She had her kids in my house, they sang songs in front of my green screens in my house, and she literally did a lot of things with me. We went to dinner one time and I paid for it, which made an official date, but then in another time we went to lunch and she paid for that, so which that made that sort of a date. But, you know, we were sort of in the process of losing our own life partners at that moment in time, and it wasn't really appropriate for us to reach out to one another, but there was love there because she called me every day, practically multiple times a day. Now, when a man gets those type of calls, he sort of feels like, okay, there's something happening here, there's something real, there's a real relationship occurring, and openly love flourishes in those moments of time. The reality is I've never met a more beautiful and brilliant and spirited woman in my life is really true. The truth is that the Lord has given me so much information about this woman, I almost want to hurl, but unfortunately, I don't have the right to say what God has gifted me and what he doesn't. I only know what I get gifted. I know I get told beforehand, before I'm getting pulled off my walking district, since the police have illegally and immorally taken away my business vehicle on a unofficial procedure that was literally the fault of my defense attorney. And isn't it interesting that it was in Noblesville, Indiana, that my account that would provide me the voicemails that proved I was doing everything lawful got ruined by a cop driving by. You see, what they didn't recognize is that I have a gift of being able to see them, and that's the truth. Now, in life, we have moments of time to say all the things we want to the people that we love. But you know what? I don't always get those moments because little girls lie. They make up lies. They tell people things. They call police when they've been flirting and doing all sorts of inappropriate things. I've had that happen on several occasions in my life where women have prayed at me literally into dark closets, through dark garages, into bedrooms, and other places as if I'm supposed to just go, mm, what am I doing here? But as a man of God and as a man of honor, I don't take advantage of those moments, regardless of what skimpy clothes they might be wearing. I had a millionaireess do that to me once, and I was there to teach her metaphysical things. That was sort of out of control, and we loved on each other a great deal, but nothing, of course, was inappropriate because she was involved with someone else, and I don't play there. The reality is if she came back in my life, I probably wouldn't trust her one second because of her lies to litigated situations that she's caused in my life. This week, I've been litigated now twice by immoral, illegal, and lying officers who keep getting my information somehow. You see, the person of interest cameras in our communities totally are used to destroy lives. They're used to monitor people. And openly, they have convinced religious organizations to infiltrate their opportunities and destroy my right to free food. You see, when you're homeless and when someone messes with your technology and destroys your computer and cyber hacks you and does all these things that, frankly, most police officers know how to do, it makes it highly difficult to move on in life. Now, if I imply that it's not just some outraged technological social empath or social psychopath, if you will, who's done this to my life, I have to ask why. Why would someone do this to me? Well, hell hath no fury like a woman scored, is what a line from Shakespeare said. And frankly, it was that woman long ago who was my business partner in a large international multi-level marketing organization who made the first call to police. Instead of graciously accepting Christmas gifts that I held in my house for three years, waiting for her little tantrums and her little immature activities with her, improper ex-husband to continue, I waited a long time. 
And finally, I was frustrated and I was tired of looking at those gifts in the closet during the holiday season, and I went about a week before Christmas to deliver those items out of love, honor, and regard for the relationship we had produced in our lives. The problem was she was not happy with my joke gift, which was the wrong gift to give first. I had a promise ring in there, an offer of marriage to, to deliver, and she couldn't even handle having me on the porch. She was moved. She teared. She cried. She was going to let me in. But when she opened that gift of silly hats, she threw me off her porch in fury. I guess somehow I insulted her. I wasn't trying to say that. I was just trying to say, look at me differently. You're out of your relationship. I'm out of mine. And I'm madly in love with you. And I want you to try a different look for me. And openly, I thought the hats would be great on her because she's a beautiful, stunning spirit and soul. The reality is that didn't happen. Instead, she called police, humility me at Christmas time, and literally said that if I didn't come back and get those gifts off that porch, then something else would happen to me. She'd throw them away. Well, what kind of a Christian says that? You know, I was sort of impoverished at the time. I was still struggling to get out of the debts that was left with me after my spouse left, and frankly, I didn't really appreciate getting told that my gifts that I had lovingly purchased over the course of three years were not worthy enough for her to review, for her to give to her children at holiday time when I knew she was struggling because the Lord told me so. You see, when her grandfather died, I was actually told that. Her grandfather has died. And then lo and behold, she texted me and told me her grandfather had died. Now, how hard is this for her to figure out? I literally get signs off the charts for this woman with her initials, with her names on places that I go, and she somehow thinks that God is not in me. I have to say, what in the hell are you talking about? Because if I get all this little information about her life, the highlights, not the day of today, thank God, I don't want to know every little time she puts on a little stitch of makeup, but the reality is, what does she think the Lord God in heaven is actually doing up there in heaven? Do you think he's playing around, monkeying around, going, I'm just going to give this guy some prophetic capabilities to know about your life, and you should do absolutely nothing but ruin his life with police calls. You know, I find that highly offensive. I also find it highly offensive that other women in her life infiltrated our loving relationship when I sent her fun gifts to help her to focus on loving her children during a very hard time in her life when she was losing her spouse. Her spouse was basically illicit and immoral and when I met him I couldn't believe she married the guy but that was just my humble opinion and it wasn't my right to say it. But I was surprised and shocked at who she had married and it was the first time I had literally met her. But this is what happens in life, that women don't pay attention to their mouths. They gossip and they destroy a man's life. I literally have been harmed across multiple states by sheriffs since that original call. Now, should I have malice in my heart and soul? Sure, I suppose if I was a weak man, I might really feel ill will towards that woman. Because it all began with that call because she wasn't mature enough to sit down with me over a food, a meal like we had done many times before, or come to my home like she had been in many times before, literally to the point of having her children sing on my green screens and other things, and I gave them things to do so that we could talk about professional issues she was challenged with, and I was really there for her while she was kind of struggling. But the minute she started raging at me, I was sort of done. I was losing my own life partner, and I didn't have to continue on to listen to her shit. And that's the truth. But I'm telling the story now because it's time for people to get that gossip harms lives. Gossip and inappropriate calls to police destroy a person's life. I'm living in homelessness. These assholes that she's obviously stooping or doing something with, or they're just illegally monitoring her phone, are literally trespassing me out of places to get food from religious organizations. All because one officer illegally, immorally, took things that were not their right to take out of my life and out of my home. I've had constant theft out of my storage unit. Constantly, my stuff vandalized and manhandled. And yep, some of it's done done by birth family because they thought they had rights in my life and I can't prove it is what they're always touting. Yet I know it deep within my soul. And the reality is I know that officers have stolen from me too because they had my keys when my car was an impound. I no longer have a car because of their lies on my life and that's been tough. But I'm man enough to walk from city to city. I walk from Carmel to Noblesville. I walk from Noblesville to Fishers. I go to do my business. It doesn't matter what I look like now because most of my stuff is online right now and I'm not interested in what someone locally thinks of me. You see, a bridge job is not going to provide for me a real living. It's not going to provide for me a home. It's not going to get me out of these lies that people have told them my name in apartment complexes. And openly, it's not going to fix what my illegal sister did in my medical files. You see, the problem is that now the illness that I had over 20 years ago is starting to return. The headaches are beyond painful. They're excruciating. 
but some monstrous policeman thought he had the right to get into my medical files and monkey with my hormonal health and think that if he just made a switch, he'd be in control. No, he's not a medical practitioner, he certainly is not my physician, and I'm about to sue his ass into the ground, or some friends of mine might just handle some things. And that would be the federal government agencies that are literally looking over me for a position in their work of protecting people's rights in this land, protecting our food in the nation, and getting our environment back on track with what we need to do, which is protect it for all people in all times. In this lifetime, we have to look at who we are. Are we loving enough to help someone get on their feet? Or are we such the shit that we think that we'll never be homeless? Most people I have learned, especially in talking with lots of organizations, mainly primary churches and their idiotic ideas about homelessness who have never been homeless in their life, is that the truth is most people, if you talk to the real people involved in this sort of stuff, like the Good Samaritan Network and other places, they know that most people are a few paychecks away from homelessness. There's only a handful of superior people, like the Joan McMahons and all of that, who know how to produce a living off network marketing that gives them an residual income pardon me, immediate income and a lifetime income. And they can float from company to company because they've got the skill sets, but they won't share it with just anyone. You have to be in their programs. Well, you have to life their products in order to do that. And I might have bought $80 worth of product from somebody, but she talked me out of it. I ended up buying a bottle of soap. The soap literally took the hair off my arms. I was sort of disappointed at that. But God had directed me to something else to purchase, and I was ready and prepared and had the income at the time to do it. You see, one little sale like that could have produced more interest in me, but the liars of the land don't get that. I'm not calling that woman a liar, I'm just saying sometimes people outsell themselves. A simple sale can produce a lifetime relationship. In my heart, mind, and soul, I love this woman more than life itself. I already died once, actually, over the situation, and yet that's not good enough for her to sit down and talk to me over a meal. I have to wonder, was I just somebody she used, or was I really just a man she could play with? Because in her mind, her loins are deserving of much more big macho men in the police force that she can stoop and do whatever with. Now, some of you are not going to like what I have to say here, and I really don't give a rat's ass. You're not living in homelessness. And if you are, I'm sorry for you. If you're not, maybe you'll get off your butt and do some things in life. But the truth is our social media channels are not allowing us the full federal rights that we deserve underneath this land's national standards and con <clears throat> congressional, if you will, Federal rights. You see, telecommunications is regulated by federal communications. Social media uses telecommunications in terms of the internet and telephone lines in order to produce results, and we are not being allowed our rights. These social media companies are controlling whether or not we can reach out to someone. They're implying that we can't meet a stranger. They're saying that if we don't do what they want in terms of paying them more money on top of our own phone lines, then we can't reach someone. That is utter ridiculousness. I understand that they need to make a living, but I'm pretty sure they're doing that pretty well. Look at the multimillionaire schmuck in Facebook. But the truth is, if I say my opinion, then I'm liable for it. Well, most people are liable for what they do. What's what's fascinating in these situations that I'm being litigatedly abused is what it's called. It's called litigation abuse. It's normally something that applies to women who are going through a struggle of a situation where a man has been inappropriate with them and they're trying to use the law to harm them. But in this case, the, the law is trying to harm me. They're trying to litigate me into a problem. My own public defense uh, pretender, if you will, failed to give me the deferral that she told me about when she was trying to accept something worse for me. She said, I'm sorry, that's off the table. Like, when did it come in? She literally told me she had it. She had the paper of it. But my guess is that some police officer will tip her off and she'll throw it out, which is federally immoral and illegal, frankly, because I deserve to have a public defender who is going to really fight for my full-on rights. Now,